it. Uh, I think probably it's going to get to a point where teams are like, oh, well, we can do this against that lone druid, and then we can win every single game up against the lone druid if our plan works out. And then you know, the lone druid becomes a little worse pick. You get heroes that have to be banned instead. It, it's definitely a, a lot more exploration that can be done here. But, I mean, these openings, even though they are like kind of similar throughout some of these games, we've been seeing a lot of different early picks. A couple CMs. Team Secret have picked up, I think, Jakiro first phase in one of their previous games that we saw from them. So there's a lot of adaptation still to be had. Ember Spirit, Shadow Demon... Not really a great duo together, but certainly some very powerful set of heroes for Team Secret. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. pretty powerful hero to have with Luna. We already saw the huge movement speed buffs that can definitely turn the tide of a lane. Uh, the secret lane, at least versus the Luna on the other end, is still kind of up in the air here. Uh, I'm interested to see what Team Secret want to do with the Shadow Demon. They've been picking up a lot of Nyx Assassin for Keizu. It's a hero that does pretty well with the Shadow Demon setup, and that won't be too bad there. You can always go for you know, your classic combos, get a, uh, a Kunkka on board with the Torrent or something like that. And you can set up some pretty devastating hits on heroes like Luna and Rubik, who really don't last very long once you hit them with that stun combo. So uh, I said earlier, Team Secret have been kind of playing passive support heroes, very just farm oriented for Puppy and Pylai Die. But this is definitely a chance for them to be a little bit more so on the aggressive side. And I mean, Advinim with the Rubik is not inherently super aggressive either. So maybe the tables will turn a little bit here. 10 seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Uh, I mean, Adfinim have a Rubik. So Reserve I do think time. that the overall game plan of should they pick up an Enigma is something that Adfinim are already somewhat prepared for. That being said, Team Secret have run a good amount of Enigma in the hands of Keizu. And it is just one of those heroes that can turn losing situations into great situations. It is that explosive. It is... Kind of hard to slow down his farm just because of how he jungles. I think it's something that they're just giving a little bit of respect to Team Secret for. Like, they could handle it, but they just don't want to deal with it. Team Secrets turn to ban. I, I can't help you with that, dude. Too many games blend together. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> Radiant team pick. Oh, team secrets turn to pick. Mm -hmm. And instead of banning a hero like Ogre Magi, Team Secret really heavily targeting Thug. Five Just seconds. A remaining. couple of those heroes that have good matchups versus Ember Spirit. That being said, there are quite a few heroes that have good matchups against Ember Spirit, especially when you have an Ogre Magi roaming around the field. So two v one in the Ember Spirit, or even two v twoing. Uh, against the Ember Spirits lane should still get Advinem a pretty decent time. And this is a definitely an interesting way to go. Nyx Assassin now for Advinem. Great hero to have up against Darkseer and the Ember Spirit. Most likely to be played by Skylark. Look at all these stun combos from Advinem. It's going to be real tough for this Ember Spirit to slip out. It's going to be real hard for them to get Surge escape value. 10 seconds remaining. 5 seconds remaining. Reserve time. Mm 
Hmm. Terribly. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of room for. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of room for an invoker at this point. Most likely, it's just going to be a mid ember off Darkseer, Terra Blade, Shadow Demon, grab another kind of supporty hero for a Team Secret, not going to be that Chen. And then just be okay with that. This is. I really like Terra Blade. Oh, for Ad Finum. Uh... Yeah, that is. Certainly a possibility. I do think they would probably want to have just as much magic damage, as many answers as they can to this air blade. Uh, I like OD here for Thug. That one's pretty nice. Queen of Pain is someone that Team Secret will struggle to deal with just mobility wise. I think that's also a reasonable way to go for Thug. Definitely one of his heroes as well. Hmm. Ten seconds remaining. Five no, seconds remaining. I mean it. It's very annoying for Nyx, Ogre, and Rubik, but and deal with it. Okay. Radiant team pick. Hmm. That is. I don't think I've seen Secret play the hero a lot, but uh, it just in a vacuum as far as. Buying a little bit of space for Terrorblade and Ember Spirit to get on board. It is a great hero. You obviously have the Darkseer combos as well with the Ion Shell. Five Up against softer heroes like Luna and Rubik, there is certainly a lot of value to be had with this Earth Spirit. Team Secret, they kind of just want to time. wait for the first uh, you know, 10, 15 ish minutes. You know, get a couple of pickoffs here and there with the Earth Spirit, but it is really in the mid game where they're going to try to hit their stride. And okay, Ad Finem. Wow. Finish with the Sniper. Uh, Earth Spirit, Ember Spirit, yeah, they can get on top of Sniper pretty quickly. All right, uh, that's that's a pick. <laughs> I thought this was a Baby Knight thing, but uh, apparently not. I do believe Secret have banned the Sniper a couple of times now. So I'm not sure if uh, this is actually uncommon. Let me see if uh, there are any stats in Sniper games. I mean, I mentioned earlier, like, you're going... You're expecting a versus Ember Spirit mid lane, and you don't really have to work that hard to get a good matchup. And Sniper definitely is one of those Ooh. good matchups with Ogre Magi. You can set up some pretty easy kills. You do have to worry about Earth Spirit a lot in that mid lane, but Ogre Magi can in general keep you safe. Uh, Bloodlust on Sniper and Luna sets you up for positions where you can just chip down towers and force Team Secret to come to you. It is definitely a risky pick because of that last pick, Earth Spirit from Secret, but it is. Good enough for Advinim. Uh, it is definitely unorthodox, but it could work. It's a strong mid laner with uh, the right assistance. There's Ogre Magi as well, and it also opens up a defensive and aggressive uh, sieging opportunity with that Sniper Bloodlust. So I kind of like it. They do lack the frontliners to tank for the. Sniper mm -hmm. though, so I'm slightly concerned with that. But if you five man at the right time, Team Secret might not have the manpower to hold back this push. So we'll see if that's uh that's gonna be punished or not. The sniper pick. There is Ogre to babysit him at the start, so I do believe the lane for him should be pretty easy in the middle because SD and Nurse Spirit, they're okay. But uh Ogre is where it's at. Yeah, it's kind of like a replacement for tanky frontline heroes. They kind of have to rely on Skylark a little bit more. So the more farm Nick Assassin gets, the faster he gets to those Vendetta levels. The easier it is going to be for Advidem to initiate. It is not really incredibly easy for either team to start these engagements. Uh, Vendetta is going to be very important for Advidem. And on the other side, just having vision is going to be very important for rolling boulder initiation on kind of small scale engagements. Uh, if, if they are able to find those Vendetta hits and kills, then yeah, you could suddenly just pour forward with the Sniper and Luna and Secret will kind of be on the retreat. Once that happens, Advidem should be able to handle those fights fairly easily. But if that doesn't happen, then uh, they are working with Luna Sniper, very heavy physical damage in the mid late game up against a Terror Blade, which is going to be somewhat of a struggle. Yeah. 
Well, um, let's let's bring back the while you know, while you're talking. We t I searched out this uh, <laughs> the sniper, the sniper uh, stat for the game, and uh, guess what? It's it's actually the it's actually a thirty six percent win rate <laughs> of all the matches in this series. So, jeez, not so sure about the sniper pick, but you know, you never know. The game could work out for them, but. One thing that is actually more curious to me is Puppy's Earth Spirit. I don't believe I've seen him play much, maybe once in the past, but this is definitely not a puppy hero. Yes, that guy is a... I can do it all, but does he play Earth Spirit well? You know, we had Noya to draw reference from in the last mm -hmm. series, so this is, gonna, uh, this is gonna be some big shoes to fill. Even for puppy, so we have to kind of we have to see. It's it's a pause right now. Uh, uh, do we have a DC high ping? All right, so high ping is plaguing us for now. But uh, he has to restart start the, re the router. So we're gonna have a little bit of time to theory craft. At more secret, just purely based on draft. Um, how, what do you think is gonna happen here? Uh. I like Adfinim a little bit more, but I think in general it's it's fairly even if you just look at the heroes that they have. Uh, Secret will have a little bit of a... The, I expect them to have a little bit of a slow start in the heroes that they've selected. They do need build up items, mechanism on Keizu, Veil, on the Ember Spirit, and just, you know, general stat items and Terrorblade, Dragonlance, and whatnot. Uh, it, in that time, Adfinam are going to be running around with an Ogre Magi. Luna really doesn't need that much to get going. So, I like how Adfinam have, the have a much higher chance of just getting a snowball started and it's gonna to be tough for secret to come back from there on out i don't think i've actually seen puppy ever play earth spirit so or maybe, maybe it's just not coming to mind yeah definitely it's, it's not gonna be tough because you see him playing yeah i've been in play a ton of earth spirit like spartan and mnt's earth spirit is both good mm -hmm. they're the they, should be they were the meta prepared. abusers back back in the day along with jerex but uh puppy mm -hmm. he's more of a chen enchantress kind of guy those old school four position heroes. Yeah. Don't see you don't see Chansey as much anymore. So more Chen than anything. Capturing ancients, pretty good. You know, I still haven't seen a Doom eat an ancient yet, so I'm kind of sad. I'm, I have this little checklist for version seven, and a couple of things haven't been uh, fulfilled. Well, have you seen a Doom at all? Uh, he's bad. Could you man. could you go to your fancy stat thing and look for? Any Doom games? Okay, yeah. That have been let, played. Let, let, let's do that. See if there's any. Probably gonna come out with an error. <laughs> it's oh, gonna crash right. everything. Hey, no worries. Yes, nine matches and fifty-six percent win rate. Will you That's not look bad. at that? <laughs> you could certainly do a lot worse than that. But I, I mean, I, I don't really expect teams to pick up Doom, like ever. Maybe if you're going up against, uh, you know, a lot of these kind of mobility heroes like Ember Spirit who just can't do anything once they're doomed, but the teams probably are not going to go ahead and draft something like that. Mm -hmm. It has to be like an Ember Spirit mid and an anti-mage or something like that top lane for Doom to even be considered for a pick. Well, the Chinese have run four position Doom, and if there is a four position Ember Spirit in my games, I think we can squeeze in a Doom, eh? You know, even then, even if the Doom was picked, I do believe they might actually just tech towards the extra Infernal Blade damage instead of the Devour. I don't know. We'll see. The the, the Devour seems like a meme build to me. I don't know. I mean, eating the... one of them Ancients, like the Granite Golem, would be cool. Right? Yeah. It is potentially very strong, but it does take a long time. And you have to invest into a Doom. Maybe if you're on the Radiant side... You get like a very easy Doom jungle with this uh, tier 2 pull camp thing, bottom lane, and then you could kind of abuse that to accelerate. I don't, I don't see it happening on the Dire side ever. Yeah, yeah. you know, to think Dire used to be powerful, all times has changed. And Dire map advantage isn't, it used to be like Roshan and Radiant used to have better pulls. And now the Roshan's now kind of in the middle. Everything radiant, right? Except except Navi, they see something we don't. 
they play in Dire every game. And it, it's not because they got relegated to Dire, they pick Dire. Well, Navi are also, I think, kicked out at this point because of their record, so, you know, if you want to look at the results as well. Hey, no hating, I'm just stating a, a pattern here. Hey, I'm just saying too, like, they're, they're picking a lot of Dire, they're also, uh, you know, not drawing and losing yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, well, maybe they're, they're, they're this. This is the this is the training wheels, you know. They're just <laughs> mm -hmm. keeping it in check, trying to practice dire. I'm very afraid to go into showcase mode because that's how it usually crashes the game. Yeah, they crash my so, game. That's usually how I entertain myself when the games are down. But mid one is spamming some some faces. Madara, it's the XD. Has the Dark Moon emote as well, wow. Blame your, blame your boy Skylock. Mid 2, bad joke. Nice, from pro players. They were uh, having some role battles. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the, apparently mid lobby. 1 was pretty good. I think Doom was played yesterday in NA. Doom was played yesterday, okay. Well, that is, that is NA, Doom. Alright, any so. doubts? What hey are, man, what are we doing NA here? Dota, we're we're pioneers over here, okay? Yeah. The rest of the world can't handle our trailblazing. They don't understand it. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll we'll just wait a little bit. See what Madara. Madara equals worst. Probably talking about uh, talking about the anime character. These guys big on their anime. Something that we haven't mentioned yet is the fact that uh, mid one is on the terror blade and MP is on the ember spirit mid one usually goes towards mid yeah it is possible we MP see mid lane terror blade it's still possible we just see swaps because it's still like True. one minute 27 negative minute 27 until the game starts so mm -hmm. it is possible that we see a little bit of a switcheroo here but you know putting a terror blade in the mid lane expecting that sniper matchup Actually, not that bad, because Sniper does work his lane a lot with just headshot and range, lots of physical damage, and 10 armor starting, quite a bit of value. Mid one, uh, mid one can play in the safe lane, because MP used to be a mid player, so... Mm -hmm. It's very possible that Secret do the old swaparoo, but Skylock is back, so it's time to get hyped. We're gonna start and jump into our games. Yep, there we go. There we go. Fix that Greek internet. Let's hop into match. I thought uh, Ad Phantom guys played on the same, uh, playing the same house. Something. Uh, maybe they practice there yeah, for they're, some time. They're sticking they... with it, so it's mid one middle, and I mean MP middle and mid one top. So something different, or maybe it's a mid terror blade. No, no. You could no. definitely no, mid, go mid with mid either of these openings. Yeah, so it's, it's not really going to be a, a huge prize for Adfinum if they suddenly see, like, oh my god, it's a mid one terror blade, he's not in the mid lane. Because MP, you know, we all know MP played a lot of mid lane in his day, so it shouldn't be much of a surprise. This smoke might be a surprise, though. Might run into MNT. Yeah. They're going the wrong way. Well, well they do have Puppy with Iron Oh, they see Madara, oh, oh, they missed Puppy. Oops. Right. So, that so. one, yeah, we're, we're going to be looking at Puppy's Earth Spirit play very closely. So we're, yeah, compared kinda, to Noya. It's going to be under a microscope because we, we want to see how well he's going to do. And yeah, the, yeah, the pings are it's trying to hit a Luna here, with that. Okay, yeah, a little spiky here as well. Pings are a little weird. I feel like Adam and them are always playing with lag. <laughs> Mid one. Well, don't you know it. They can go in again though. Like Earth Spirit with Ion Shell is very difficult to deal with from a Luna and Rubik standpoint. <sighs> All right. So, hundred ping is pretty bad for gaming. It's not the worst. Back in my day, two hundred, three hundred ping, you just play through it. Couldn't get any better on BattleNet. <laughs> BattleNet in twenty seventeen. <laughs> Well, well, I used this to play. I used to play Garena, not uh, not, not Battle.net. Battle.net was not really helpful for finding Dota games. Really? 
Must have been a region thing? Probably, yeah. Because, uh... I think... I, I don't know what, what the reason was, but... A lot of people didn't have better net. Oh yeah, 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 because a lot of people have, uh, a lot of people here have fake versions Crack of Warcraft. Version. Yeah. yeah, so we don't have the battle net. Yeah, yeah, that's why. So every one of us, like, okay, just, it it was all like saved onto a thumb drive, and then we just sent it to one another. Mhm. Mm and that that's how it spreads. But none of that had battle net, so the culture is to just play arena or have LAN parties, go LAN cafes, such as Asia. But yeah, good times. Uh, those are the high school days back when Dota One was still prevalent. Yeah, I mean, you any guys internet internet cafe culture is definitely in Asia and it's pretty much non-existent here in America. Yeah, just culture things. I played like one game on Arena, and I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? There's no point. I just use BattleNet. Yeah, but back then we didn't. Uh, back then, most games didn't go past thirty minutes because there'll always be levers, especially after first blood. No one really wanted to mm -hmm. try hard for that long. So most of Dota was early game and mid game because no one really got to the end. There was no punishment. There hey, was no reward. But someone left. You can yeah. Swap you can swap your one. heart carry over the one that you spent thirty minutes babysitting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the the person who gets swapped will still be feeling great because they they have everything. They're still ready to play, and then your team just gets crapped on because you lost all that time, and yeah, you're, you're kind of screwed from there on out. One of those are the good old days where you could random a hero and then just ping any random lane. It might be a dual lane. It might end up like a quad lane. Who cares, man? Just just run with it. Yeah, well, it's a it's a it's 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 a nice it's a nice memory. It's. I remember I used to cheese with my friend, you know, we'll just do some stupid thing like PA and Pudge and it will somehow work, you know. And then we'll we'll laugh at how OP it is, but looking back, yeah. We were two K or one K. I think before TI PA one to... came around, I was like immensely, immensely worse at Dota because, you know, there was no material to study, there was no like, you know, after after TI one, you know, I learned a lot of tricks like warding. The concept of warding came out. You know, wow, you know, yeah. What what are wards? I mean, when you start Dota, there's so many things to care about. You know, you ignore the non-flashy items. Wards are one of them. Non-flashy items. You just want to play. You just want to use spells. You're discovering new heroes. It's, it's you just build fun. battle theory on everybody. That too. Uh, or you go boots first. On everything, and uh... boots battle theory, dude. That's the best build on any hero. Mm -hmm. Like you're playing Tide Hunter, friends. yeah. Go boots battle theory, Earthshaker. Just go for that as well. Are, are we actually having a real game here? I, I, I don't this know. In the background. Let's not jinx it, Mike. Let's not jinx it. All right. Well, it looks like the runes were split, even with a little bit of invade from Secret, Skylark, Thug, and Pikazu. So, and pretty standard bounty rune stuff right there. All eyes will be on Puppy, Pylai Dai, and Keizu in this tri lane. The really awkward tri lane actually, because Shadow Demon doesn't actually contribute all that much here. Usually, you don't need setup for a Dark Seer or Earth Spirit play. Yeah. Well, now MP is gonna suffer the wrath of a Ignite Spammer, but Spartan with the body blocks could get some damage onto MP. But it's a uh, Bloodlust level one, so. Not going to be that Ignite spam that uh, MP was probably going to be prepping for. He's still just uh, me chilling in this aggressive tri lane. Not even sure if they could stop power from farming, oh, honestly. They're going to try, though. Okay. Where's the roll, Crap. puppy? Nope. And they lift him into tower range, take a few shots. Yeah. I thought puppy was going to roll in there. Yeah, it seems like he just wants to manage this pull. It is possible to get those like four point surrounds in Dota 2. A lot easier in back in the day in Warcraft Engine, but yeah, I think that's probably the best bet of them getting the kill if they don't have Puppy involved in that. Like your Spirit just with his slow from the rolling bowler, that's what oh, you need to get. This start again. Again. I think this time Puppy goes in, yeah, you go rolls in and this is an easier target to pick on. Maybe next time Puppy will score first blood. So very nice one, so Going well for Mr. Papan. 
I was gonna be looking in the middle lane. This is an interesting EXP spread there. They got level two on Pylai Diet, setting up for Soul Catcher actually. Mm -hmm. A little bit of amplification on that Rubik, and Earth Spirit was still like he was level one. Six of Bouncerman to get to level two, so yeah, they were giving experience over towards the Shadow Demon and towards that uh, Dark Seer in preparation for that play. So a little bit of min maxing there, working out pretty well for Secret. And now we'll see what Puppy can do with this haste. Uh oh. Spartan's in trouble. The Flame God has been propped, and uh, I think Spartan is going to fall here. Tries to break the Flame God with a Fire Blast, and it's not going to happen. Puppy, two successful roams already, so I'd be pretty happy about that. Then they shrine up as well. What better thing could happen? And he will want to try to get a little bit of help with the top Shotgun. lane. I mean, mid one is going to have just a fine time up against Skylark, but letting a Nyx Assassin get a free time in this type of environment when Adfinim need their Nyx Assassin to be getting a lot is something that Secret should be keeping an eye on. A quick level 6 and suddenly all your roams are going to be very quickly negated. So if he can make his way up there, that'll be great, but it's just so obvious if he's off both the bottom and mid lane for that long, then fall back as a Nyx Assassin. It's not really too hard to deal with. Yeah. Mid one is uh, training decently well against his Nyx Assassin. Not too bad. The regeneration on Nyx will offset some of that harassment Robot. that mid one is throwing out. Oh, it shouldn't be able to kill him. But Madara is, is running out of late there on Puppy. Oh, what? They got Ember Spirit. But he finally got him. So overall, well, yeah. I mean, you keep this dual lane in this mid lane for long enough against the Ember Spear, who just has a really rough matchup. Even one v one versus the Sniper is something he's gonna struggle with. You find MP with seven CS and Thug with twenty three. That's that's no small differential there. And yeah, it is mostly a dual lane because Spartan's camping out in that mid lane. But uh, Ember Spear under farmed gonna be really really tough to play with they're gonna have to use this terribly a lot more actually with this metamorphosis try to take down the structures to accelerate the ember spirit to kind of uh, smooth that curve over yeah but uh one thing is letting the skylark nyx assassin hit level six early lit early as well because they apply this pressure they have a trade-off you know they, they pin down the luna luna has to fly out a cell to herself means that Nick Assassin will have that Vendetta available to him again, but the Soul Catcher harassment is just there. He's gonna throw it out on the Luna, harass her back, knocking her down to about half life. Not too bad. Puppy has an Invis rune looking at mid. Killing off Thug here is definitely a possibility. Oh, they do know that the there's power. an Ogre here too though. Oh, we're just gonna roll in, maybe get him to the tower. No, that's just gonna be fun. So just the old fashioned way. Ticking down and now Spartan in danger as well without the firepower off the Sniper. Might not be able to get out there. The Opal Venom actually ticks down his soul, so... I think Puppy's got him, there's a roll. Yeah, Puppy's gonna roll right into him, and then there's a kick backwards as well, so right into the loving arms of MP, and another kill here from Puppy's rotation. Clubs down the Ogre. And even with an Ogre there, like, the Sniper is just such easy pickings, and oh, wow, mid one solo wow. kills off Skylark. That is something you Hell, see only often. one point spike carapace, but uh, yeah, metamorphosis is definitely a spell. So, secret finding kills pretty much all around the map, and that, that was a really necessary one as well. They need mid one to be really fat, they need him to get his extra range from the Dragonlance. To keep the Snake Assassin down if they can, but hey, a solo kill is, is probably one of the best case scenarios, and you know, especially killing off Thug, getting MP, a couple of extra minutes worth of farm. Now he's at level 6, so jumping on Thug is a real possibility. Only one point take aim, so MP can see and get on top of Thug very quickly now. The Sniper will need constant supervision now, because the Ember is level 6. You never know who's going to wrap in from the side. Earth Spirit can just roll in from a thousand miles away. But uh, Luna has gotten some of the pressure off her and has managed to start farming. Building into a... well, bring up Aquila and start getting her footing back. Mid one though. I'm still very surprised he got that solo kill with only a level 1 reflection. Probably a trade gone wrong for Skylark. They have an oh, ogre going in. For... But uh, with this raindrop, oh. looking pretty impossible. But now they're going to roll in. The silence is there as well. Nyx Assassin in trouble. We're going to stun him up mid one. Not there to collect this Nyx Assassin kill. So the Vendetta 
Yes. Don't be popped here. Mid one has to be careful. There's another impale. Very, very arrogant here. Farming on its own. Is he gonna dodge the stun? There's the five blast. I'm gonna throw out that stun as well. The mana burn is there. And uh, we'll pick him off. So Skylark does find a kill. But meanwhile, they lose a sniper looking to rotate over. In the end, getting banished there by Pylai Dai and surrounded by Puppy. So slammed into the ground. Oh, and bottom lane, Keizu. Pulling some shenanigans on the creep wave is narrowly able to escape the clutches of the telekinesis from MNT. Slips out of there with the surge, and he'll be just fine as well. Spartan's still up here, actually. Duke's a roll. Yeah, this ogre is dying a lot now. There are disruptions. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. No soul catcher there from Pilot Die, but it doesn't matter. Spartan throws out a spike stun. He gets kicked away by Puppy. I don't know if Puppy's Noya level yet, but he has been finding some big kills, or rather, he's been participating in all of them. He's been where he's needed to be, right? Like, that's, that's, it counts as the Earth Spirit. If you are where the action is, you're probably playing a good Earth Spirit, and he's contributing quite a bit, just making sure that the numbers are generally in Secret's favor. Skylark, though, looking at MP. No rune. No, didn't want to reveal himself. Oh, now he knows that there's a backup spirit. It's like, might be able to Vendetta Impale him to assassinate. Yeah. Or if he can get the flame guard up. Flame guard up. You yeah. can't go for a hit first. Oh, they're gonna start a trap. No, definitely. I think. Yeah, there's the fire. But there is going to be. Wow, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> Didn't even need to assassinate. <laughs> that was like, oh, nope. Cancels it. Shoots Paladine instead. Uh, yeah. God, how squishy Ember is. Yeah, once you lose that flame guard, then you're kind of just baking bits. And now Madara and Spartan find Airblade. And the stun as well. Skylark is everywhere. Well, yeah, Skylark just bouncing around, taking kills. Although that was mostly just a lunar rotation based off of level 7. Uh, get Eclipse, max out the Lucent Beams. You're going to be pretty happy. And this is the snowball that I was talking about that can happen from Adfinem. It's not really you know, in full effect just yet. But Secret will need to get a lot of these Earth Spirit ganks to go off in order to really start to significantly counter this because MP with his item build, like he's not really ready to go into a large scale engagement. Midwon and Keizu, both the same exact thing. They need more time and Adfinem really don't. The Dark Seer is top net worth though. Oh, rather he's a top CS. He's top net worth on uh, the Dyer though. And uh, Rubik showing himself is probably gonna get jumped there by MP, MP jumps forward, there will be a change, the soul catcher gets applied on the Rubik, the poor guy, gonna get looted up, goes for the lip, a fade ball on Keizu, but he will not escape death, the mid one will be here with his team to claim that tower, and maybe they take two, the metamorphosis is fresh, so mid one might claim another tower with his team. The Luna and Sniper are also separated, so as far as counter push here from Adfinem. It's going to go towards two towers. We'll probably bring them down fairly low, but shouldn't really be able to take down one or really both. I, I do feel like Secret can just keep mid one in this bottom lane, teleport out with everyone else, and make sure they don't lose any of their structures. Mid one just is that powerful, especially with Pi's disruption levels. Level three disruption, but meta ends, but uh, Highlight Dike does get some last minute clones out, so they are in meta form tug. Going for the slow here, Skylark could just start with that stun and maybe pick off that uh, Nyx Assassin. But Nyx Assassin goes there with the Spike Carapace, finds the Darks here, Highlight Dive, juking in the trees there, but he will buy a little bit of time, but not enough. As uh, they find him, corner him, and they shoot him. And uh, leave him out to die. Poppy, vaulting to the top. Doesn't want to give Madara the tower. He puts a lot of damage into that structure though, mid lane. Didn't really take that much damage, so Secret do lose a couple of heroes. Darkseer, Shadow Demon, kind of expendable. They're keeping their important heroes alive though. Mid one and MP both. Uh, MP recently getting a kill as well on MNT. So yeah, they're getting a good amount of farm. They will still be under the gun for a little while in this game, but they are starting to get there since Madfinum haven't really made any big attempts at structures yet. Another clip's available. Once Helm the Dominator comes into play for Madara, then they'll be a little bit more willing to go in and four or five man down these structures. 11 minutes in, let's take a look at net worth. Slightly favoring Secret here at 1,000, but overall not a big deal. Pylon Dyer is doing a little bit of de-warding. 
hitting the 100 bucks. Well, mid one is going Dragonlance, so... Secret, you think their game plan will be to end the game early? Or are they okay sitting back and farming along with... Farming along here with Epfinite? I think Secret just want to hit this kind of mid-game timing once you get this Veil on the Ember Spirit, get Dragonlance on mid one, get Mechanism on Darkseer. Once they have that, oh, oh not lose oh, Ember, that's the first option. They jump on Skylark, yeah. Nick Assassin not gonna get the kill this time around. And Madara pop. Yeah, oh, there's an exit from Puppy as well. There is a Magnetize, Madara. Caught out, the Purge is there as well, perfect play there. Mid one gets a nice kill. Madara actually takes the L to Puppy on that Magnetize. So, I think it's safe to stop hitting on uh, puppies, no, or questioning puppies' earth spirit. He's been getting a lot done. He certainly has been everywhere he needed to be. And I have been rather separated, not really able to respond to a roaming earth spirit in full force. Uh, they're still in a decent position though, because they are getting enough gold. They have the Helm Dominator on the Luna. Snipers on top of the net worth chart. I really feel like he has enough items here. Okay, there, there's the items. <laughs> Not for the Night Worth chart, he has no items, but now he actually has some real items of his own. But Secret are, I, I think, at the point where they're going to be feeling comfortable taking a fight should Adfinem want to fight. Like, they have the roll in on the Earth Secret. They have now, soon will have a large amount of magic damage from MP, which of course will be amplified by the Darkseer, or it will amplify the Darkseer's damage as well. So, yeah, Secret should be ready to defend their structures if they get a good angle on Thug. That's really the big if. They need to make sure that this sniper is pressured. They, they don't want to be caught in a situation where they get cornered into their base and their, their sniper plink away their sniper plink away their towers. It's a very common strategy, and again, I think the whole thing stems with uh, AF not having frontliners as much. I mean, Nyx Assassin is a frontliner, but he's not that resilient right now. He has gotten the Midas though, so he might be able to build into bigger items down the road. But that's if they get down the road with less mistakes. Okay. Just look at this positioning from Adfinem, Thug, way in the back with MNT even further back. Make sure that should Earth Spirit roll in towards Sniper, he'll immediately be reinforced with a lift. Yeah, MP tries to go for the chains, doesn't latch, and uh, mid one keeps on the farm. Looks like tier one will be free for Adfinem. Secret. Just chilling for now, not really doing anything. MP not finishing up his veil, they're gonna go for a smoke first. And try and get a kill. the converted catapult walking past them. But they do see the Luna. Maybe a nice gank. And here. I think she's dead. Yeah. No, you never know. Oh, Adara comes in. There's the sun. There's the sun as well. No chance at all. A big kill to get. Airblade, meanwhile, gets himself cloned. We'll go ham on the tower. Keeping keeping Luna off the board, making sure she's under farmed, making sure she's just dead is very much a secret because without a Luna, there's a very, very small chance that Adfinem decide to make any substantial plays. So, I mean, they kill off the Luna, which is great, but they also take the opportunity to kill off a tower, put even more pressure towards the bottom lane and the structures in that general area. So, killing off the Luna just pretty much stops Adfinem from doing anything for you know, 20, 30 seconds, however long the respawn timer is. It's a really, really big kill to get. They are looking, though, at Finem for MP. Yeah, he has a arcane rune and no spirit behind. But uh, he does have the support of a dark seer, so... Not gonna reveal himself. Keep himself off the map. Scare secret a little bit more. It still has a little bit more vendetta duration. Could have stunned Keizu out of his TP just to be uh, annoying. Pop net worth is but Adfinem are going to rally around this Luna now. I mean, that's pretty much what you would expect, right? Like, you get, as Adfinem, you, if you have Eclipse, you rally around your Luna and you just get ready to slow siege these towers. Really force Secret to make a decision. Do you want to fight this and kind of gamble around rolling into a sniper? Do you just want to try to get some farm elsewhere? Split push with Terrorblade is very, very scary, but he's not in position right now, nor does he have Benamorphosis. Yep. Also, tier 1 for... No, no tier 1 for tier 1. Shadow, Shadow Demon, though. Fine. <laughs> Gonna partner up with some Terrorblade illusions to clone more illusions. Look at him. He 
he's got a illusion rune. He's just tagging along with Pile though. Floating up some rat rat spirits. Radiance top tower is under attack. Pylark is on his tail though. Actually, he's a couple oh, he of them. Just be careful not to walk into a sentry again. After that last time, you might want to mm. be a bit more cautious. So they have easily taken down the tier ones. Dragonlands pick up on the Luna should facilitate a little bit more action towards the tier twos. If they can get Skylark that Aghanim Scepter, then it'll be, of course, a lot easier moving forward. But mm, this Terror Blade is starting to get fairly scary. And you gotta remember that all these items that Terror Blade is building up also going to be spilling over into Shadow Demon's power level as well because of disruption, which is going to be very difficult for Adfinem to deal with. I mean, Luna Glaives are great and everything, but. Yeah, you're going up against a lot of illusions, especially once this Manta style starts to kick in. So, uh, Adminem, they're in an okay position right now, but I do feel like they might be going a little bit too slowly here. Uh, Secret are farming a lot on this Terror Blade. Yeah. The team fire has not started just yet. It's six to eleven. It's Secret favorite right now, but uh, Adminem. The, the the main concern for Adminem's draft is uh. They're they're good. They were good in the laning phase. They're good at catching people, but when it comes to saving their pels, not as good. Mm -hmm. it's Rubik telekinesis. He might be able to steal a disruption. Yeah, but that's that like would actually be pretty very. Safe. That's that's more of a clutch situation than anything. Well, if he somehow gets it, then you can start spamming in with sniper and Luna illusions. <laughs> That's actually a very nice pickup for MNT if he's able to steal that somehow. Well, try luck. He's eating away at Roshan. Is this not seen? Somehow? There's a lot of get true this. sight here for the Dire. But no regular observers. I'm surprised how fast they're Roshaning actually without any minus armor. That's Bloodlust on Luna and Sniper, two like kind of glass cannony heroes. They take a lot of damage on Luna because someone has to tank it, shouldn't have any uh, form of sustain really. So it's going to cost them a little bit of health, but it seems like Secret just had no idea that that was happening. Little smoke gank here and expect Adam to kind of split up after Roshan. It's usually pretty standard for a team to get Rosh and then fan out, push out the lanes all with you know individual heroes. You can pick one of those heroes off. Still be in a good spot, but I think we're actually sticking together very close to their Luna. Hmm. Puppy. Hand of Midas. Let's see what he builds out of that. With that 90 gold per minute. Uh, get some delicious items. Blink dagger into the Agonims. Free someone and kick them back to the team. Puppy yeah, there's, there's a lot of a greedy support. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, this is like just he sometimes is very selfless, but it seems like in the secret lineup that we've seen so far, he's always been building up some really big items. Like, even the Chen plays that we've seen, it's like he just farms a lot. He, uh, he was the one who played Chen, the man. yeah, he was the one who's played the Vengeful Spirit and then just straight jungled and then got a ton yeah. of gold. So, very worth it. Oh, he gets an arcane rune and a hand of Midas. That's a feel-good moment right there. Puppy's gonna be rolling in some dough. If he's able to get an Aghanim Scepter, roll into a sniper, imprison him, and then kick him back in or something like that, then oh, blink dagger. that will be just aces for the Earth Spirit. He already has a Veil on his team. So Earth Spirit's damage output right now, level 11, is, is actually quite high if the uh, MP. Yeah. I think uh, the next item you'll be looking at is the Blink Dagger first, maybe? And then the Agonims? Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of good Earth Spirits Probably just play that. the Blink Dagger a lot better. Uh, there's a chance he goes for like a Lotus or something like that. Yeah, it's possible. But I mean, you have yeah, the Minus a lot of on the hero target. that usually can't afford that, so... You can go for whatever you want, man. Oh well, slow and steady. Terrorblade Illusion is going to start uh, collapsing the map here. The Shadow Demon as well. This is very difficult for Adfinim to break out of, although they will try with Skylark. If they get a gem on this Terrorblade, fan out his illusions, then Skylark is going to be feeling rather useless. A lot of pings going out. 
Matara's using a lot of this Aegis timer for not really that much. I mean, they're farming some pretty decent items. Mantis style coming up on Luna, not too bad. BKB on Sniper. If you're looking for tier twos safely, then yeah, you, you do want a BKB, but only two minutes left, and uh, you can see the Terra Blades farm is kind of exploding out of control. The rest of his teammates are keeping up as well, and that's important for this Ember Spirit to keep up with his farm levels, for the Darkseer to get towards those Guardian Greaves, the pipe and whatnot, to counter that uh, Luna Eclipse. Yeah. Skylock, passing the Acronym Scepter already. Dara's Aegis, not being made use of for now, but it does look like he's edging towards the top. Trying to look to take this tier 2 tower by force. I think he could have the firepower to kill him and then the Aegis again. Because again, we, we don't have a lot of frontliners for this team. So, Luna has to play the tanking role. Mm -hmm. But uh, looks like Secret this... is content to just split farming because Terrorblade's starting to get out of hand. The Manta is up, so a lot of Dying illusion farming can happen. Keizu as well. Once the Sniper and Luna start firing... Oh, Spartan, okay. Well, the Ogre's gonna go for a walkabout and he's just gonna get annihilated, so there's that. And they'll quickly clear up the ward. Uh, they pretty much waste the Aegis for a tier 2, which is... Okay, but really you would expect a little bit more here. But when once Thug and or Madara get set up, start shooting at a tower, it's gonna be pretty difficult for Secret to actually get in on that. Like we saw in that position when they were sieging the tier two just then. Sniper was up in the trees to the north to the south. Nick Assassin was burrowed with the Aghanim Scepter. He was ready to intercept and stun ideally a terror blade. He decided to make a play in. You gotta go on so many spread out targets, and Avkinum do have a lot of effective range now that they do have this Ags on the Nyx and He's gonna have a little bit more once he gets the uh, ether lens completed. The Nyx Assassin will be a good high ground defense. The Sniper, very strong for that siege, but also really good for the defense because he spams out the shrapnel, makes it really hard for you to just walk around and then shoots you from a distance with the with the bloodlust in the back. You're able to dish out a lot of damage before you can even clear the clear steps. So Afinum, they might be losing grip of the the map, but they will be able to they will be able to hold the line at least, and maybe try and capitalize on secrets bad movements of that placements. The thing is though, like with Terror Blades and Shadow Demon, you'd have so much free tower damage. You just have like inevitability if you're on the side of Team Secret. You know that okay in the, in a game state where nothing is happening, where the enemies are bottled up in their base. Even if the map's split in half, we could just keep sending these illusions down the lane like this. It's gonna take a long time, granted, but I mean, hell, they're not really in any rush. They're farming elsewhere. They have travels on MP, a huge item to have in this type of game where really not much is happening. You're just trying to be efficient and look for opportunistic pickoffs. Uh, Ember Spirit doesn't have a ton of damage right now, but he is able to accelerate a lot because of these travels. Yeah. Oh no, MP. I'm gonna start building to it that. Lightning Hammer, or does he maybe go for the Battle Fury again? Uh, going for mass magic damage is more standard than going for uh, the, I guess, Hybrid previous patch build. build. It's in the Battle Fury right now. But, I mean, he has all his base items up right now. These are all the early game quote unquote items for Earth Spirits, at least nowadays. Veil, Blink Dagger, even a little bit optional with the travels. If you... Eh, it doesn't really matter, because either way, he's going to be split-pushing really quickly. Oh, oh. Going, uh, going for Crit and Cleave, though, has better late-game scaling, and it does seem like we're heading in that direction, so maybe he's going to decide to go for that. Well, they do have only a small lead, despite the higher kills. Two times the kills, they only have a 3k lead in terms of gold. EXP favors the Radiant, actually. Because of the ages and a few other things. Affinum are now gonna smoke. The ages was not used, but now Luna has managed to buy enough time for a BKB. And that puts most of the secret spells out of commission. Only only the purge will be working on her now. Radiance Curry. So if Affinum can get into a good fight, whoa. Curry getting sniped by a wandering illusion. Two hundred golds. Probably just vision on that courier. I would That's imagine funny. nothing more important. I mean, they have BKBs on Sniper and Luna. 
I'd be them don't push with this if they decide that hey we could probably win a late game and just sit back and farm more then uh yeah they're giving secret a lot of room around the map to kind of just abuse their position right now bkb is also up on terror blade and he should be able to get this eye of scotty pretty darn quickly he was like only a hundred uh, a thousand ish above enemy carries before now he's 2k up above the luna skylar already entrenched in this position ready to fight this one out and these uh these long range initiations you never know you might catch someone off guard and uh, start the fight for you I, I remember there was a game yesterday where one of the nyx assassins just stunned from a really long distance and caught one of the cloud nine guys out and they they followed up from there it was mm -hmm. more of like a harassment thing and just throwing it out but the enemy carry walked into it so counts still counts uh, at least for secret, if, if that is going to be the case where a random impale is thrown out, it's an ally, uh, they have a shadow demon. So if it looks bad, just disrupt him. And odds are, like, the person who's going to get hit is someone like a terror blade. So yeah, you're probably going to disrupt him anyway, get some really powerful illusions. This is truly some exciting farm gameplay right here. Both teams just scaling up into late. I mean, Sniper's going to be really glad he has this Maelstrom. He obviously got it to soft counter this Terror Blade, clear out his illusions, but yeah, getting some farm acceleration on a Sniper, paralleling the cleave of the Moonglaive on Madara. We'll keep these cores on Advenem farming. I think Secret uh, need to make a move. They have their BKBs up already on on Terror Blade, but they don't have it on mid one just yet. He's building, his, no, I mean, not mid one, MP. They're building his BKB, but I'm not sure if they want to really wait. They gotta fight again before, before they lose another objective. Because right now, Avenim are slowly just taking farm around the map and getting those core items up. You know, we built this magical Ember Spirit and then we don't fight. And now they all have the BKBs, making it very hard for them to actually use the Ember. The Radiant scans and know that secret are there. And MP's like explosive power with the Veil and Fire Remnant combo. Really powerful if the enemies are grouped up generally. Uh, up against AdPM's team, they are most likely not going to be grouped up. Like, I would be very surprised if Ember Spirit's able to hit like Madara and Thug and one other, or even just two heroes with that uh, kind of all in jump in combo from the Ember Spirit. Like, AdPM, they, they have so much effective range, and sooner or later they'll be going for these Hurricane Pikes off of these dragon lances so mobility is probably going to be uh keeping these carries of Advenim safe well, looks like secret are gonna be sitting back and waiting for mid one to get his pkb then but they will keep pushing it up oh skylop they see skylop they will latch sniper as well as the ogre but bkbs like you said are up and mid one is running head first into the enemy. The vacuum comes out only onto the ogre though, but he's blown up because the Luna shreds his own teammate. Somehow Thug shooting himself. Terribly stepping and delivering, killing off two heroes. There's the Rubik and the Ogre down. Those are big ultimates to throw away though. The silence comes out. Mid one gets hit by an assassinate. Has to be careful, Skylar keeping away. That's a cute little thing. Luna getting punished there uh, by MP. BKB used already, but still cornered in, not able to TP out. And I think Secret might just go for a yeah Roshan here. There's still a little bit of meta left. Gonna be able to get that damage in. Puppy gets sundered, but it will heal back up. So Secret, a big win for them. That was Advina taking a fight in maybe the worst spot imaginable, where there's nowhere to retreat to. Hero That's what Sniper really wants. He wants to be able to shoot and back up, shoot and back up. Uh, just stutter step his way back and force Secret to kind of follow him if they want to get the kill. Luna wasted her BKB and her Eclipse on very little. Like, the Eclipse Dark mostly hit on her Keizu and Keizu's Illusion. So, you know, Dark is going to be more than happy to absorb the Eclipse for the team as far as that is concerned. So, Appium just getting caught in a really poor position. And now the map is going to start to shrink. Talking about this earlier, like this Terrorblade inevitability, once you get this amount of farm with the Shadow Demon Illusions, you're going to lose a lot of map control very quickly if you're not ahead for Advenem. That's also the the issue of the Luna killing her own teammates. I think the Ogre died so quickly, mainly because Luna's illusion was just going ham on him. Sniper nearly died himself, uh, and his own illusion nearly killed him.
So overall, a lot of a lot of factors playing into this. And imagine if Luna got disrupted there. I'm not sure if she got disrupted there, but there were a lot of glaze bouncing around on the radiant side. I don't think there was a shadow demon disruption on the Luna, but if if there ever is, like you could grab some really powerful illusions from that from the wall of replica as well. Uh, really difficult for Advienem to clear out that number of illusions. Like glaives are great, maelstrom into not Mjolnir on the sniper. Like, he'll have it soon enough, I suppose. It'll be great as well, but there's gonna be so many illusions. Airblade already can create like what four and then flash, and then you have two more coming out from the Shadow Demon. More from the wall. It is going to be a mess for Advin. It's going to be bad for Luna, bad for the sniper. But imagine being like the Rubik or Ogre Magi. Like, what do you what do you do in that situation? You got to just throw out your spells blindly and hope what you're hitting is real. And there there aren't a lot of nice spells for Rubik to steal too. So, so maybe he can steal a wall and get a Terrorblade illusion. Yeah, stealing wall or stealing disruption that for I think uh, disruption Rubik is, the is best. gonna be pretty important. You could get vacuum is not too bad. Eh, vacuum doesn't really do man. that much. I mean, it's an AOE team fight spell. It could set up a ravage with with Nick's assassin. There is, I guess, that dream. I mean, he has the blink dagger. He has the level two spell steal. So there is some potential there, but. It is very, very hard to execute. Oh, just gotta get that vacuum first. Radiant Wait for Dark City to use it to farm and then grab it. Easy. Here comes the Terror Blade Illusions. Free 100 damage onto the tower with pretty much only mana expend. Puppy's even walking around with a gem at this point, so vision from Appianum is gonna start to shrink and. Heroes like Sniper desperately need to have vision around the map to know where it is safe to farm because they are so soft. Yeah, there's one. This is looking bad for Advinem. Got that BKB already. I mean, not mid one. MPI keeps calling mid one. Pilot Eye ate the lens, so he's gonna be able to do that life saving from afar. And uh, he almost has the Blink Dagger as well, so. The reach on this at Shadow Demon is even better. He doesn't have to be in the fights at all, just stays all the way back and disrupt all your key targets. And uh, Luna, very far out on her own, might need to BKB this. Highlight Die is there, starts the disruption, Soul Catcher is there, BKB might not bail her out, he has to BKB it. Madara, oh boy, gets 24 bucks for his trouble, kills off two illusions. Oh, all right. From a, that's a from just a couple spells being spent by Pilai Dai, I'm not sure if it can possibly get better than that. Like now you know that Eclipse is down. Now you know that the BKB is down. That was nine seconds as well. Not a small investment there from the Luna. So I mean the doors were already kind of open in favor of Secret. Now they're even more so. Now they're like they've the taken out all the tier twos. It's time to shrine up, and there's one down already. Second one, pretty easy to take from them as well. Ooh, did he? Oh, also, Pilot Eye like. has uh, 15 talent cast range. Oh, nice. His effective range is going to be insane. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. I I wish we'll we'll see the 400 demonic purge one day with Agonims, but you know, that's uh, that's going to take a while to be fulfilled as well on that checklist. I think that will happen I mean, before given, Doom gets picked, though. That's the sad thing about Doom. Given the pace of this game, it's not an impossibility. Like, Secret oh, wow. are just For taking a sweet time. You're saying it might happen, so we're gonna get an end game in five minutes. Mike did it! Hey, 40 minutes is a pretty reasonable time for a Dota game, I think. Yeah. Nice, nice and average length for Dota games. Average-ish. Well, they are both playing very safe. Uh, I, I felt like Secret could have punished that BKB and Eclipse wastage a little better, but better to Especially err on the... the safe side. They need those wins. They need a 2-0, like everything today. Every team needs that 2-0. The Aegis is down. Skylark really shouldn't be walking into this. There's gotta be detection for sure. And that'll purge. Oh no! Oh, oh, going in the spike but there's your ever spirit as well with the triple right at the entry thug gonna stand and deliver because he knows he can't run from this puppy kicked him in the face and an ultra kill for mps their follow-up no the luna has tp'd away but the rest of the team incinerated skylark really should be expecting the detection going up first uh, 
a real problem here. And FNM again, the lineup flaws showing. They can maybe get away with that if you have a four staff on the team, and I don't believe anyone actually does. Uh oh. Uh oh. Luna gets kicked, gets stunned. The vacuum misses though as a result of that disruption. But she is gonna have to pop a shrine. Solar crested up. Yeah, they have to deal with mid. Oh, mid one is going down. And a kick! And a jump in from mid! P! Gonna be killing up the Luna. Tug might be next. Scotty. Slowing him down. Highlight Ice slows him. The clones will shoot him down after he passes. But Puppy is gonna lose his life. But that's all they're gonna get. Mid one has already destroyed the middle Rex. A stolen magnetized there. Gonna be failing. Highlight Ice purges from a million range away. And Skylar deploys that ultimate. But uh, to little avail there. There's nothing left to really stun. The secret they to that fight right that. after Terrorblade lost his Aegis because it was reclaimed also. So just... Yeah. In that context, Secret stomped Advent decisively with that wall vacuum combo as well from KZ. That was on point. Uh, and Advent now are one lane of Raxes down. Mm -hmm. After trying to make a little bit of an aggressive attempt, suddenly, like all their big farmers, Sniper, Luna, whatever, they're behind the Darkseer, they're behind the Ember Spirit at this point, and uh, by far, they're behind the Terror Blade. 10k lead for Mid One. Uh, he's actually like almost 6 lud right now. Yeah, Mid One has proven to be a, a insane middle lane player. But uh, this lane, given the space and time to farm on that safe lane, got two solo kills. And 10,000 net worth ahead of everyone else. I mean, once Terrorblade gets a good amount of levels, he just farms the jungle very, very quickly. Because of the illusion spam. And uh, he mm -hmm. got the illusion runes a couple of times as well. He got Pylai Dai disrupting him to help him out. A lot of things, and uh, killing everyone in the battles is a good thing to do. I don't know how they can kill and a CB. The, the way, the way like a Terrorblade wants to manage his fights, like if we go back to this Radiant river area fight that we just saw, that you have Keizu make a giant wall vacuum and add for him right after that, the, their only option at that point is to retreat, at least up to the high ground. Mm -hmm. That means Sniper has got to be moving, that means everyone from Secret is going to be spilling forward. Terrorblade at that Ooh. point is guaranteed to be in the back of that fight, whereas the Sniper and Luna, they found themselves in the middle of the fight pretty much immediately. There's very little pressure going towards mid one in, in those type of scenarios. It is going to be much more difficult for him to find those type of engagements when you're pushing up high ground. But, I mean, he's, he's so much more farmed that I'm pretty sure even if he is in the middle of the fight, probably just going to be killing everyone around him. And he also he's has Sunder, gonna be able to pop I don't Sunder think he used here. last fight. No need. No need. He was just mm -hmm. hitting buildings. But Pilot Eye picking up a cloak. Going to the Glimmer Cape. There's a Banish. Who is it on? Nope. There's a Luna Illusion. Lucky for Luna. They're just waiting for Roche right now. Secret, they already have a racks up. They can keep sending these illusions in because it's free, pretty much. But mid one can tear down Roche in just a couple of seconds. Get a double life on him. Or the Ember Spirit wouldn't be too bad either. And I think them are, are not leaving their base for a very long time. I look at this, the Shadow Demon illusions breaking through the range racks. Didn't they nerf the illusions? They Wasn't did. In this patch? They did, but Luna, Luna Illusions do more because they keep bouncing about on the buildings. And there are two of them, man. Shadow Demon's oh, Illusions do Ember. almost full damage. Oh, they spike him. An Ember Spirit. They're keeping him there for really long, though. He jumps away, he pumps that BKB just to stay alive. Radiance Can't blame the guy. He's got a really big streak, so dying here would be detrimental to Secret's plans. And while everyone from Advanem are trying to kill off an Ember Spirit mid, uh, look at top. We have a, uh, you know, balanced Terror Blade thing. Casually bringing a tower down to 200 ish HP from, I think, 800. Illusions and Roshan available as well, so there's that. Illusions with nerf. Clearly, the frog will never stomp out illusion power. Yep. Unless you make them do completely no damage to build things. And somehow someone will find some way to make them good. Hey, mirror images in uh, Warcraft 3 Blade Master do no damage at all. We can do that. They're gonna well, roll by Roche. Well, here comes the Dix Assassin. 
Goes in with the barrel, spike stun, everything. That's gonna be stunning there for quite a long time, but the Aegis already picked up Skylar. Now in a lot of trouble because this one deploys their BKB, the raid boss, takes over Roshan, they GG before the bodies hit the ground. And uh, MP gonna be diving in for that Rubik. Does he get saved by the bell? But this, this loss was a long time coming. As uh, Secret walked all over at Venom in game number one. And now they just need one more game for a safer 